What's up, everybody? Welcome to the RT Clinic. Thanks for coming by. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos. Comment below. I'll try to get back to you. But today's video, we are going to talk about something that may seem pretty boring, but to our patients, it's really important. We're going to talk about humidifiers, attached nasal cannulas, and why you need them, why you need to put this on your patient. Let's go. So this may seem like it's a very simple thing, but it's really important to our patients. If you've ever worn oxygen before, you'll know it's extremely dry. The oxygen coming out of the wall right here actually comes from it's vapor off of liquid oxygen stored outside of a healthcare facility. When it comes in, it is nearly, if not 0% humidity. So your body is really cool in the way it deals with humidity. And if there's one thing that you know about your respiratory health, it's always good to have moisture in your airways, to have thin mucus in your airways. And I know it sounds gross, but it's absolutely true because that's your body's natural defense for everything. If your mucus is flowing like it should through the mucociliary escalator and being moved around, that's your body's protection from getting any kind of infection in. So having, being well hydrated is really important. Having well hydr hydrated airways is important. Well, what's one of the first things to do? Somebody comes in the hospital, we put them on nasal cannula oxygen. We plug it in, we put it on two liters. What's happening when that comes out is that 0% humidity is coming in their nose and your body's natural, your natural sense of the reason you have your nose is actually to heat and humidify your air. Because by the time it gets down to your carina, it's got to be 37 degrees Celsius and 100% saturated with water. Now, that's like 44 milligrams per liter of water. So uh, very saturated with water coming out of your lungs. And that's why if you know you exhale onto a mirror, whoo, you'll see moisture come out because you're exhaling very humid air. Your body's doing that. How's it coming up with it? It's pulling it from your body, from your airways. The first place it's going to pull it from is your mucus. So if you are not well hydrated, your mucus is gonna get dry because your body's saying, I don't care what kind of air you put in here, I want it 37 degrees and 100% saturated by the time it gets to the carina. So you wanna stay well hydrated so that your body can do that. Now, if you're taking oxygen out of the wall, that's coming out at 0%. It comes into your nose and immediately, moisture is gonna diffuse, humidity is gonna, uh, moisture is gonna diffuse from your mucus into that because it wants to make that air 37 degrees warm, 37 degrees Celsius, and 100% saturated at the carina. So by actually putting dry oxygen on, you are weakening somebody's natural ability to fight off respiratory disease and respiratory infections. So by putting them on that, you're weakening their actual system. Now, if, you, if you've seen this before, you have a patient you have on maybe three liters of oxygen and maybe six hours into their stay, they end up getting a bloody nose. Well, why is that? It's because you've put, pulled all the moisture away and then you have, you know, the mucus will crack and you'll get, you know, if there's any vessels that are weak, they'll have bleeding. It's all because of humidity. And you did it. You gave them oxygen, but you gave them 0% humidity. Now, the air we breathe, the humidity around us, it really, it varies from day to day. But let's just generically say it's about 40%, 40, 50%. Well, your body's got to work that other half to get it 100% and warm by the time it gets to the carina. Well, adding bubblers is really important because what it does, it doesn't add a lot, maybe 20, 30-ish percent humidity it adds, but it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the stress off the body. So these are kind of funky how they work. They are a bit intimidating too, because when it comes, as you can see, it's sealed up. There's no hole on here. There's no hole in here. So you can't just like, you know, um, plug a nasal cannula into here and have it work. So if you're gonna to try to do that, you look, you have your nasal cannula. I'm using a high flow cannula in this case, if you can tell. And this doesn't go into here. So I'm like, well, what does it do? Does it go on this or where does it go? You know, there's no hole in here. And look, this doesn't leak out. So it's somehow we've got to get oxygen into here and out to the patient. So a couple different things we're gonna look at. You can see this is threaded on the top of this bubbler, okay? 
And then this piece right here actually is threaded also, and that's gonna help to hold our cannula. So the first thing we do is just take this off. So people twist, people do all kinds of different things with this. I would recommend twisting and pulling it up to take it off. So now you can see there's a nice hole there. Now, if you don't do it well, the hole might be small and you're not gonna get as much flow as you should. The cool thing is about the flow meter is that if you're not getting as much flow, it's gonna show on the flow meter because they're compensated Thorp tubes. So this is gonna go on here like this. So kind of screws on, we put a little plastic on plastic twist and that works really, really well. The next thing, we gotta figure out how to hook this thing to a flow meter. So one thing that I've seen before, which is not correct at all, is you have your oxygen flow meter here. Oxygen flow meter. And you have a Christmas tree on the bottom, which we call that. And then I've seen this happen before. People shove this thing into here and it's really even hard to do. Shove that Christmas tree into there so that it blows the oxygen in. That's absolutely wrong. So let me show you how this is gonna work. Now you can do this with the flow meter in the wall or you can do it with it out of the wall, but it's really simple. So inside of the bubbler comes another piece and it's a plastic piece and it's threaded as you can tell. So what we're gonna do with this, take this out of the package. And it threads directly in here. Now it won't do this. Almost everything is dummy proof in medicine. So it only goes on this way. And if you see it has a little spike down the center, this part goes up here to the flow meter. This part, the spike is actually gonna go through here and allow us to put oxygen into the bubbler. So you go down until it stops, and there you go. Now, I can squeeze this and the water will come out the top. The next thing I'm gonna do is you say, how does this fit here? Well, we just take Christmas tree off, and this screws directly on. This is something good for everybody to know how to do. So, very simple little modified wing nut here and it goes on and seals. So when I turn the oxygen on here, it's gonna go here down to the bottom through here. It's just gonna bubble through the water and then it's gonna come out here. So what's that gonna do? It's gonna take the 0% humidity and add some as it bubbles through here. Now, is it enough for your patient? It's probably not. It's not gonna recreate whatever we're doing with the air around us because it's less than 30%, but it's going to help them so their body doesn't have to do as much work. So this plugs in, and now we're ready to deliver oxygen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn up our flow. Let's go to five liters. So what's happening now, the oxygen is going down the flow meter down the back here, into the bottom of the bubbler, bubbling up, and you can tell there's a really nice bubbling sound. So with that sound, you're gonna have that going, going out to your patient right here. So now there's one thing that really comes into play here. That's really nice. And you can do it on five liters. In this case, this is a high flow cannula. So we could actually go up to 15 liters and this bubbler will handle it. Now, if you notice, it gets really tight, but it's really going to town because the more 0% humidity oxygen you're sending out of here, actually you really wanna humidify it even more because you're washing out more of the, more of the room air that's already humidified that's going in the patient's lungs. So you're gonna see that going down, this thing might be kind of sitting there, kind of vibrating a little bit. It'll go through the water a lot faster, the actual sterile water, a lot faster than a normal, a normal uh, two liters would. But most protocols say that over three liters, over three liters on this, once I go to four, that's gonna require us to put a bubbler on. But many protocols also say that if it is Within, within a patient's request, then you can put the bubbler on. So I'm going to say something right now that I really think that this is how you should change your practice because you really need to start your patients off with a bubbler. And 
I get it if they're on two liters, it may not, they, all of mine, and I need it. But think about that 0% humidity oxygen you're putting inside their airways and how that's right off the bat, it's slowing their mucocellular escalator and it's weakening their natural immunity to fight things off. So the body's natural ability to fight things off is being weakened by drying out their mucus in their airways. So why not do this for your patients? I mean, it takes a little bit longer, obviously. If you have to take this off, you have to take this off and switch it out with a Christmas tree to do a nebulizer if you have those type of situations. Another thing you wanna look at is what would happen, and this is one thing that we're kind of taught in respiratory school, which is kind of fun, but what would happen if this was kinked off? So if this got kinked off, well, it really shouldn't kink off uh, because you see I have it kinked right here because this is star tubing and it's really not supposed to fully kink off. But if it kinks off, you're, you should see your compensated Thorpe tube start to go down, but your bubbler will start to gain size. Now I'll kink this off, watch the bubbler get larger. You can see it expand there, expand there, expand there. Now, almost all bubblers are built with an internal pop-off valve. So if you've ever heard one of these go off, you'll know exactly what it is, but I'll show you the internal pop-off valve on this one. So let's do it, let's, let's hope it works. So. In respiratory school, we're taught that, you know, when you first put a bubble on a patient, you know, we really learn a lot about oxygen, as we should. When you first put a bubble on a patient, you're supposed to check the pop-off valve. So it's one of those little um, quiz questions that you might get. Uh, so I'm gonna check this pop-off valve by occluding this. So let's hope it doesn't explode. So I'm gonna occlude this. And there it goes, and you can hear that sound. Now, have you ever heard something like that before? It is annoying as heck, so let me do it again. It takes a little bit of time, but what happens, there's a valve in there that's gonna pop off before it explodes. So, occluding. Yeah, so there's a sound you don't hear every day. So, activating that pop-off valve is kinda neat, but anyway, this is built so it's, it's not gonna explode. There's one little thing I wanna show you though uh, with using these because there's one way that you can really give your patients an, um, a nasal washing when they really don't want to. And it will make them quite mad, especially early in the morning. So let's say we're going along here and I, I'm going to give my patient a breathing treatment in the morning. So I take this off. So to do an accurate demonstration of this, I am using myself as the guinea pig, which is probably not gonna be great, but just to get an idea of what a patient might feel. So if you're dealing with bubblers, you need to definitely know this when you're using them. So let's say I just took this off in the morning. I'm gonna hook the Christmas tree up. I'm going to put a nebulizer on, give them their neb. Well, in the meantime, while I got their neb, this thing fell over, okay? and it fell over like this, and if you can tell, it's leaking water <laughs> into the tubing, which is starting to come out already. So this is, and, and we've all done this, the respiratory therapist probably done this once, and it's terrible, but you may not notice it's, it does has air, has water in it. Although I can feel it right now, it's getting in my nose, because I put way too much in. So. A really good thing to get into, and it's leaking out right now, if you can tell. A really good thing to get into is to take the cannula off your patient when you hook it up, just to make sure this doesn't happen. So, let's say I shut the flow off. I plug my, oh, this is gonna suck. Okay, I plug my bubbler back on, and I go to turn the flow back on my patient. And then it, <laughs> Uh, it's terrible. So <laughs> that was horrible. So what happened was, uh, I wouldn't mess my mic up. What happened was, as you can see, uh, <laughs> the cannula blew all of the sterile water that's inside of there into my nose. And when you're not expecting it, it's even worse than when I was expecting it um, just now. So Definitely, before you put your cannula back on your patient with a bubbler, 
especially if the bubbler has been removed and maybe fell, make sure that you blow out all of the moisture out of it any way you can before you put it back on the patient. Because if not, you could definitely give them a nasal washing, which they will not appreciate in one iota. So bubblers are really cool, but I would, you know, there's that, there's that one little aspect of them, but it is really, really important that you um, put bubblers on your patients because you are going to be adding moisture to their airways and allowing their mucus tract to fight uh, all the different types of respiratory diseases as it should having moist mus mucus. So that's really, really important. So anyway, whew. All right. So now thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And these are the things that I'll go through for you guys so I can show you what to do and what not to do. Put some bubblers on your patients and I will see you next time. Later.